Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. It's me, Melina. I want to start this video off with a quick corrections corner. I really would like to say thank you for the correction that I that you guys pointed out to me in the previous um, Moana Disney video. Sometimes I get very excited about a topic and I often don't have a lot of time to write, film, and record videos, especially multiple ones during the week because of my retail job. And when I get excited about a topic, sometimes I sort of just rush right into it. And there are times I'm sort of split as to whether you guys prefer sort of like off the cuff, more room for flawed, you know, um, discussions about things, or a more essay-like type of form. And I've kind of gone back and forth as I've done things and I realized that I may have made the wrong choice in how I made that video because I think when it comes to topics like that, because people have so many feelings attached to Disney, it is hard to do a commentary about that topic if you're not going to come 100%. If you're not going to come with the facts, the stats, all your P's and Q's, every I dot and T crossed, those flaws, however minor or unintentional they blur everything because then people are focused on those things and I know because I'm that same way too if I hear a podcast or something talking about one thing that I know they got wrong I'm like well how do you get all this stuff right but you don't get this one thing I encourage that by the way I, I think that as long as people aren't saying it in a patronizing way I think it's important that you do correct people when they make mistakes um, we all do it and the only way you can learn or know that you made a mistake is to be told so Thank you, and keep letting me know when I mess up stuff in a nice way, please. I'm going to try in the future to just really make sure I curate everything a little bit better before I post it out. I kind of, I'm never going to be a professional YouTuber the way that other people are, and I, I definitely respect and admire their hustle, but it's taken me so long to just get a camera and tripod that, that worked, and it's expensive, and I, I, and I won't ask for, people have asked me if I, had a, if I have a Patreon, and my whole thing is until I'm at a point where I know that I can actually um, consistently give you guys content. Um, I don't want to set up a Patreon because then I, me letting you down or being late with a review is an even bigger thing because you guys are giving me money for these things. I want to make sure that I can fully commit to giving you the content that you deserve before I make any sort of Patreon commitments. That's all I can say. So now we're going to go into our Riverdale reviews. And if you have been liking these Riverdale reviews, even though I know it's corny to say this, please thumbs up and share because for me, my motivation and everything is not driven by like, you know, I don't really think about it in monetary terms, but when I see the views and the comments and stuff, that motivates me. That makes me want to go out and do it. And it lets me know that you guys want to see this. So now we're going to do Riverdale reviews and uh, let's get to it. Chapter 7, um, which was entitled phone help me in a lonely place was a very good Jughead centric episode and I think th for me there's always been a fundamental question with Riverdale of how big of a role does Archie really play in the narrative and is he really necessary to the story and I think what keeps Archie from being just the biggest bore is overall he is fundamentally a good person and I think chapter 7 when you see how he is so quick to want to help Jughead. Like when he sees him come out of the, in the shower, he's like, what are you doing here, bruh? And he's like, just taking advantage of the, the facilities. And he's like, eh, wait, what? Why are you really here though? Like, even though he's dumb and he's silly, he picks up on those kind of things and he helps his friend instantly. And just the entire episode, he's very much trying to help um, FP and deal with the reality that his dad is a fucking human being because it's always hard for teenagers when it's like oh my debt my parent wants to say that I can't do this but my parent is flawed and fuck them because if they're flawed then it doesn't matter if I'm flawed blah 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 it's a lot of that angst and there are there's good acting here there's good acting in this episode I think that the FP Fred relationship and how it parallels a potential alternative future for Jughead and Archie is really interesting and I think that as we widen the scope of possibilities of who's 
responsible for Jason's death, they're finding ways to make the, the murder suspects more and more interesting because now whoever is responsible, the trickle effects are going to be so momentous because everyone is sort of intertwined with each other. And JP's introduction really into the storyline now and showing Jason's jacket at the end just really shows that if he is responsible, it's going to include him this the, and this is the rest of the serpents, the lodges, and the blossoms. So we have this whole huge cacophony of people who could be responsible for this teenage creepy kid's death. But I gotta say, for me, the episode that won my heart was The Outsiders. Cause Alice Cooper is just not the one to be fucked with, guys. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. The thing I love most about Alice Cooper is because she looks like she wants to just beat the shit out of everybody in the room. But she just knows that she can't. Like, that she can't because it'll make a scene. But she wants to and she could. And I think this was a great episode for the parents. Um, they really let the kids take a back burner on this episode besides the, the, the overall poly conflict. But I think that Alice and the Coopers are sort of the strongest unit story-wise because they're their issues sort of seep into everyone else's in a really engrossing way because it just leads to like the biggest like <gasps> moments and I think that we finally get to see Alice as a human being who really fundamentally wants her family to be together and most importantly her daughter Polly and I think the scene where she confronts Hal about trying to force uh, or coerce Polly to get an abortion was so powerful, especially when she said that, you know, that Hal made her do it. And I gotta say, it's officially an end to Chick Watch because I thought that Chick was gonna be the kid that Polly's carrying, but no, 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 Riverdale, you got me because Chick is the older sibling of Polly and Betty. So this abortion would have been Chick. Cooper. So Chick, you didn't make it to the canon of this, but you were acknowledged slightly. Um, but just that whole scene was super powerful and I love that it showed that her real priority was Polly. And I think a lot of people are like, Polly's stupid for going to go stay with the Blossoms. Well, that may, the Blossoms may be tryhards and terrible. But her mother and father did fuck up a menace. They sent her to some weird nunnery situation like it was 16th century France. They tried, her dad tried to coerce her into having an abortion. They tried to, sirens. They tried to coerce her into giving her baby up for adoption. They kept her sister from her. They lied about her boyfriend hashtag slash baby daddy being killed. Like, these are not good people. And then it's their own kid. So while the Blossoms are terrible tryhards, you know, th they didn't do that to Polly. And, you know, so I don't, I, I understand why she's going to try hard house, even though it's a dumb decision. Um, Cheryl and the Blossoms, every time they appear on the screen, my eyes just roll because they are just always doing the most. Especially Cheryl. It's not the actress. She's being put to do this, but like, when she's like, I want to be the godmother. Just kidding. Not kidding. I'm like, okay, Cheryl, we get it. You're the alpha. You're not the alpha. No one believes you're popular. You are annoying. You're just rich. You have nothing else going on for you. You're like Lindsay Lohan. Oh, Cheryl, you're just so useless with their giant ass crib and stuff. Like, we're here. Bought you Nana. I just... Ugh. She's just doing the most. Um, and then the continuation of sort of uh, chapter 7 story arc into chapter 8 dealing with the whole construction gig. Like when the crew's like, we're out, bye. It's like, don't y'all have contracts or something? Like just the way that the ease of which, you know, Fred's crew leaves. And I'm like, I thought that you loved these guys and you can stand to lose a day worth of pay for these guys. But as soon as they got word, they were like... Bye, Fred. So clearly, those bros ain't loyal. Just saying. That whole story, how, it, again, now the Andrews are now brought into the whole drum of the Lodges and the Blossoms because at the end of the day, wh why is he even here? Because he's having sex with her body. Well, making out with her body. We don't know if they've actually porked yet. Did I just say porked? I'm so stupid. I swear to God. 
And I loved Archie say that like, you're like my brother. And he's like, nice bro whisper, Archie. That was just really cute and endearing. And I really love that about, again, those characters being together. I think that they did a really good job of of making them seem like a unit. But yeah, Riverdale's just been a solid show. And I, and I think that next week, Archie's gonna be seduced by fucking Cheryl. I'm just kind of like, how though? What Cheryl got to give you? To quote Derek from Swan Princess, what else is there? So I decided that because I really enjoy doing these videos and I love Riverdale, I'm gonna be doing these weekly instead of bi-weekly. So my agenda is to put these up every Sunday. No thoughts and theories this week because of that announcement. However, I do have some extraneous stray thoughts that I want to just put up to you that don't make sense in a rational review, but are just my little quips I think of when I'm watching the episode after I take my notes. Why is Archie going into a bar wearing his high school leatherman jacket? I mean, you're about to go into a gang bar and you're like, can I change? And he's the only one because everyone else is also in this fucking thing. Everyone else here is on the football team except for Jug and Kevin, but the rest of y'all, Moose isn't wearing his Letterman jacket. So why are you here like this, Archie? You're not even captain. You're not even captain. Also, Archie had a major hater look when Veronica called Jughead Betty's boyfriend. He's seething on the inside and it's hilarious because you literally have a hot girlfriend right now, dude, in Val, who's, you know, musically inclined to you and feeling you in all kind of ways and you have Veronica, but yet you still mad because Betty's not feeling for your dick no more. Because you're a fuck boy, Archie. They can't fix all your character flaws. And of course, Kevin's boyfriend is pulling on Lauren Lewis and spy banging him. I don't know why we are surprised, Joaquin. He's gonna like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. At first it wasn't real, but now I feel something for you. And it's gonna be like, it doesn't matter, Joaquin, we're over. And then two episodes later, they're gonna get back together again. We know this, why do we pretend? Um, When Archie went to go confront Jughead at the baby shower I was like Archie get away from my son get away from my son so you about to embarrass my baby in front of his people and in front of Betty and Veronica and all these cup cupcakes back up off my child back up off my son Bughead is adorable but tainted I am gonna do a video kind of talking about the not kinda I am doing a video talking about asexuality and the Jughead issue but I wanted to get input from some of my close friends who are ace before I put it up so that way I'm not talking out my ass so it will be up shortly it's just not gonna be up right now but they're adorable and I like them but they're so tainted by just all the fuckery that they chose to do with them however I do appreciate that they had an Arwen kiss all my Merlin friends you guys know what I'm talking about when I say Arwen kiss like the lights the little violet Arwen I noticed during the baby shower episode that Polly and I have something in common. We both shop at Forever 21, bitch, because she had the same fucking crown as me. So, uh, 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 yeah, uh, boop. I'm famous. I'm a trendsetter, and I didn't even know it. So, yeah, that's Riverdale Reviews for this week. I will see you next Sunday, and, uh, don't, you know, don't force your child to get an abortion if they don't want to. Pro-choice means the ability to make a choice, not forcing the choice upon someone. Come on, Hal. Come on. Alice will beat the shit out of you. Fuck your shit up. Also, I'm watching Twin Peaks for the first time, and I'm watching Alice be like a normal human being. I'm like, Alice, why aren't you stabbing anyone? I think we'll get to that point eventually, but it's only been the first two episodes. But I was like, that's my girl. That's Alice Cooper. And Shelly from Gilmore Girls, but we don't need to worry about that. Bye!